Yo, what is up guys? So, we're here to showcase off the Paladions, and they're a new archetype. This is actually uh, my own gameplay here, but I have a few different uh, replays from you guys uh, that actually showcase off of a lot of different things in the archetype, but I basically want to showcase off and explain like the basic core concept of the deck, and it's kind of like a Zodiac deck, if you will, uh, simply because the, the whole archetype is all about uh, making your link monsters gain bonus effects depending on what you have equipped to them. Now, in this instance over here, I've made a Arclord Paladion, which has the ability to, once per turn, as a quick effect, tribute a Paladin or World Legacy monster that it points to, and I can actually negate another effect. Uh, but, the main core concept with the uh, Rescue Cat, and I'll, I'll basically explain now that you guys have kind of seen it. I have a few different uh, like plays over here, but I basically want to explain this core concept for any of you guys that are interested in building the deck. Uh, the Rescue Cat combo is so dang strong. And uh, anyways, so what you're going to be able to do is get out an Atreya Beast that's going to be immune to a lot of different things, uh, with the exception of like being tributed. But uh, it's kind of hard to get around that effect without like Mask of, uh, you know, Restrict. But you Rescue Cat, you go for a Paladion of the 100 Beast, and you also go for a Valorfawn Mythical Beast of the Forest. It's just because it's a tuner, uh, don't worry about the other effect. But uh, it lets you just get out Paladion of the 100 Beast, and you can actually get that card back with another card that we'll talk about in a second. But... Uh, so basically, I wanted to, to, before I duality, of course, make sure I get those targets out. That's something that is kind of important. Uh, but uh, how the archetype works and why people, again, are saying it's the Zodiac is because when you, when you have monsters uh, that are linked to the linked monster, they gain bonus effects, kind of like how the Zodiacs, they get bonus effects to the Exceed monster. But in this case, it's just that one monster. Even though you do have multiple monsters, it, basically, this is the only monster that's going to be attacking anyways. Uh, but... Uh, the Paladin of the Celestial Bodies has the effect where when it is uh, special summoned um, or normal summoned to a zone of Link Monster points, so you get to re-add back a card. Now this will actually let you add back the Paladin of the Hunter Beast. And keep in mind, since it was summoned with Rescue Cat, it's had its effects negated once. But that other effect, when you summon it again, won't actually apply that effect because, well, you didn't get the effect because its effect was negated. So, and on top of that, it wasn't pointed to anything anyways. So basically use the uh, monsters as stepping stones to make like other link monsters. So uh, the first guy that only has a link of one, all he requires is one Paladin monster except for itself. And uh, anyways, it gains attack. All of them as of right now have the ability to gain attack equal to the Paladin monster that uh, is uh, uh, linked uh, to it. Um, and it actually doesn't have to be a Paladin monster. It's just it gains attack equal to the original attack of the monster that it's pointing to. So you can get a lot of different things up, but Naturia Beast is like the most relevant card, especially with the Rescue Cat combo. But basically, uh, whenever you summon a monster that it's pointing to it, you get to add a Paladin monster. That's uh, Magius's effect, or Magius's effect. And then we have uh, Regulex, which is the Link 2, which you, you just summon this guy, you special summon something uh, that its arrow is pointing to, and then you just search out any monster, which is going to let you go straight into uh, Regulex over here. And Regulex, when you special summon a monster to where he's at, you're able to add a spell or trap. So basically, uh, this guy searches out any monster, this guy searches out any spell and trap, and the Link 3 gets to negate anything. And then from here, um, I'm actually able to special summon the Fiendish Illusion, which can actually pop an uh, opponent's card by getting rid of a Paladin card I control, um, and a card that my opponent controls. So I'm going to go ahead and pop that card, because I don't know what it is, okay? Uh, so, he'll get the Shadal effect, but it doesn't really matter, because, well, he, he's not going to be able to do too much. Anyways, and then I'm going to go ahead and special summon the Paladin of the Hundred Beasts. Now, keep in mind, you can only special summon each one of the Paladins once per turn. Uh, however, the other one was via Rescue Cat's effect, not its own effect. That only applies to its own effect. And then we're going to use this card that we already searched out with Rescue Cat, but putting it in the graveyard, then going for our Paladin of uh, Celestial Bodies. And then we're going to go ahead and make the Trade Beast. Now, it doesn't stop there. So... Arc Lord Paladin has the effect where uh, it gains attack equal to the uh, original uh, monsters that it points to, so it's at 4200, so it's pretty beefy. No one's going to really be able to attack over it by battle, but it has an effect where I can tribute uh, a card that it points to uh, as long as it's a Paladin or a, uh, a World Chalice uh, or World Legacy uh, monster that it points to. But when you combo it with this card, Crusade Paladin, which is a card that you can actually search for, because remember, when you go for the previous cards, they link... Uh, Two lets you search out the spell and trap anything in the archetype. Uh, you go for a Crusade, and Crusade has the ability to, when it's activated, you get to tribute a Paladin or World Legacy monster, especially on one Paladin or World Legacy monster with a different original name from your deck. 
And if you control a pound and link monster, your opponent's monsters cannot target monsters for attacks except for link monsters. So basically, your Natura Beast is kind of protected in that sense. So they have to get rid of this card uh, before they can get over Natura Beast. And obviously, Natura Beast kind of protects itself. Anyways, with the ability to stop your opponent from going for uh, some some uh, some spells. So this is like a core concept. And I just wanted to explain that before I go ahead and continue on with some of the plays and some of the OTKs that this deck does provide. So uh, Kappa over here is going to be showing off uh, his variant. There's a lot of variants. There's a lot of different OTKs that you can pull off in this deck. Now, unfortunately, his Rescue Cat gets negated, uh, and uh, Sun's Priority has uh, changed. Uh, well, you no longer can uh, <laughs> just be like, okay, Rescue Cat activating its effect, uh, basically as a quickable, but that, or a quick effect, uh, which was something a long time ago in Yu-Gi-Oh! But uh, anyways, important things over here. We're going to basically be able to OTK through any like one card with uh, the Kaiju variant of this deck. So the Kaiju variant of this deck will let you distribute whatever your opponent has. And you don't actually need to have the uh, Paladions that give you piercing. Uh, one of them gives you piercing, one of them gives you double battle damage. Now in this case, uh, it didn't really matter. But uh, the Paladin of the 100 Beast lets you do piercing. Uh, that it, it gives the Link Monster that bonus effect. Now, Paladin of the Vast Sky doubles any of the battle damage. Now, Reunite, and keep in mind, this is a searchable card. This makes it so they all gain, all the Link Monsters gain 500 attack, and then once per turn I can target one monster and it can attack everything my opponent controls once each. Now, everything else can't attack, but well, that's kind of just how the uh, other effects work. It's, uh, the, uh, Paladin of the Vast Sky makes it so like other monsters can't attack anyway. So, again, that's why people are saying it's basically Zodiac at the end of the day. And there are some similarities, but it is a different archetype. But uh, that is um, that uh, that one over here. So, Magus Lucius, uh, actually, no, this one is this one, the Muramasa. Sometimes the uh, the names get mixed up here. You know what? What the heck? The names definitely got mixed up on this one. Sometimes if you click on them and you play like the replay, it changes. See, it, it, it changed the names. <laughs> but uh, anyways, Magus, thanks for this one. So um, I wanted to show you guys a variety, but I wanted to explain that first combo. Uh, it's very, very simple, but it's a really core concept that you need to have if you're going to be playing this deck. Now, this deck can OTK through a lot of different things. I think the Kaiju variant is probably one of the best ones because it's very safe because it gives you a target that you can always just hit, and on top of that, you're tripping your opponent's card uh, if it, they happen to have something that can stop you from going off. Although, technically, Link 3 does let you go for something. I would say uh, one card that I think is really good in this deck is Twin Twisters, and you can see he's just taking like 13,000 points of damage. Uh, and that's because they get the bonus of the other uh, mods that you summon to it. So you can theoretically run uh, a lot of different things in this deck, because remember, it keeps the original text. So if you were to uh, say special summon a certain uh, okay, I was going to say Malefics, but Malefics have that effect where it's like the only monster they can attack. But if there's another monster that has um, some type of like really large attack that you can just special summon easy. I just thought of the metal effects off the top of my head. I guess maybe maybe someone will try it. But pretty much what it comes down to is just if you summon anything that has large attack, um, even though its effects are negated, it says its original attack. Uh, where attack, uh, attack, it gains attack equal to the original attack of all monsters that it points to. But a lot of the kaijus are actually pretty strong. And again, you're going to be doing double battle damage over here. Uh, so that's pretty good. You're going to be able to OTK quite easy. There's a few more replays that I wanted to show off. Uh, and uh, there, there's... Okay, what the heck is this deck? Oh, fortunately, it's not. It's going to get otk so fast, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, but uh, the main purpose of it, again, is to show you guys different uh, versions of uh, variety here. Um, and this one's a pretty mo uh, good combo here because of Monster Reborn. Obviously, that's a pretty good card, pretty OP, uh, especially with Rescue Cat uh, being so strong in this deck. Now, unfortunately, uh, Bellerophon uh, can be kind of a, a bad card to draw into. Uh, I've actually considered running out Magical Mallet in any of these kinds of decks. You can see it's just it's just one-shotting people. Like the the deck is is very good at that. Uh, plus, uh, going back to what I was saying before, um, Twin Twisters is a card that I really recommend. There's a few other cards that I want to talk about in the archetype, and there's a, there's a there's actually a Garden OTK too. There's a, there's a lot of ways for this deck to OTK. But uh, going back to what I was saying before, Twin Twisters is actually really good in this deck because. The thing that you would basically lose to in this deck, I would say, majority of the time is going to be like other back row because it's going to mess up your stepping stones. Um, so Twin Twisters would be excellent. With uh, things like uh, hand traps, yeah, I mean, you could technically lose out to a hand trap as well if you really need that specific monster that you're trying to search out. But a lot of times the deck has like one extra card. Um, so this is the uh, Fiendish Illusion, which I, I mentioned in my video, which I, I, I popped uh, in, in my gameplay. Uh, which uh, got rid of uh, my opponent should all hedgehog. So a lot of times, like you have like an extra like effect for the uh, 
the monsters, uh, even if they negate like one search. The, the main problem I would say in the deck is, is basically Solemn. Like if you get Solemn, sometimes like it's too hard to come back from because <laughs> you don't have like another additional summon. Uh, but other than that, I'd say the deck is relatively safe. You guys can see he was able to negate the Conductor Tyranno, and then uh, Ragna Zero uh, is a, a quick effect. Oh, it's during either player's turn, uh, but it's going to get negated once again by Arc Lord, and then we see the Rescue Cat. Rescue Cat is such an insane card in this deck. Like, it just gives you a free Natria Beast. Uh, really strong, and again, you're going to be able to search out the other card, and the guy just, like, quits, because I, well, I don't blame him. Uh, but uh, thank you, Muramasa, as well as Magus Lucius, for those. Uh, but there's a few... Uh, is this Okay, this one is... Okay, wait, what? Okay, okay, this is a tag duel. Um, but uh, I guess they're at 12,000 life points, but... Uh, we'll, we'll see a play out. So, uh, this is a Black Garden build. So, uh, the thing that's interesting with this is it's gonna clog up the opponent's board. Plus, Black Garden, it's usually seen in cheesy decks. and I, I know people like seeing crazy OTKs and stuff. Uh, so this is going to be one of those. And then also you have uh, Royal Crown over here. So uh, once, once per turn when uh, a monster spells one from the extra deck and activates this fight, you contribute it. But like you got a 69k. And also on top of that, guys, we're going to be doing double battle damage uh, to the, uh, the opponent over here. So that's enough to make a game. Uh, but uh, yeah, this card also has some extra bonus negation over here. But this is uh, one last uh, play over here. And uh, I think this is just another one of those one-shot ones. But... I got a few different varieties. I thought the Black Garden one was interesting. At the end of the day, uh, I would say that's more of a cheese way to play the deck, but I still think the deck is definitely pretty good. It's just back row that you need to worry about. But other than that, um, there's also another uh, card that I want to talk about. Actually, here it is. Uh, the World Legacy Inheritor. You get to just special summon a monster from your graver that it points to, and that's going back to the same point I was talking about before with Twin Twisters. Uh, it just gives you an, an extra, like... Uh, ability to, to throw that monster right in the graveyard uh, but again the thing that ruins the deck is still going to be psalms are basically negating the summons but now that you guys have kind of seen it i'm going to give you guys like a few like varieties of deck profiles but i'm going to go over them a little bit faster just because we got like four deck profiles in here but uh anyways we got like one uh one of each of the like the, the kaijus um I, I honestly don't feel like you need uh the star destroying one uh it's mostly just gamma seal that you really need but i guess if the off chance you can summon the other one why not uh, then we're basically just running three copies of everything. We got three copies of Vast, three copies of Celestial Bodies, three Rescue Cat, three Hundred Beasts, three Sacred Tree, uh, three copies of Phoenix Illusion, three copies of Valtheron, uh, three copies of Desires. We got Reborn, Kaiju Slumber, two copies of Inheritor. I think two copies of Inheritor is pretty good, and we have two copies of Twin Twisters, uh, two copies of Owlblade. So this card was actually pretty insane, but I felt like you didn't need it that often because, okay, here was the problem that I had. Going back to the same thing I was mentioning before, the thing that you would lose to is basically Solemns. Now, unfortunately, this is not as fast as Solemn, but it can prevent other card effects uh, from stopping, you know, other random stuff, monster effects. I mean, it means, means that it's going to be immune to everything. Plus, it's a searchable card. It's not a bad card, but I found myself not to be needing it majority of the time. Uh, then we have three copies of Reunite, so this one makes it so it can gain that ability to attack everything. Although a lot of times you guys saw it, it just wasn't really required in the deck. The deck is very consistent, guys. It's literally any monster gives you straight up this card, then all you need to do is summon any of the other cards, and you go straight into this card, and then you summon any other card, and you get to search out any of the spells. So... All you need is one you, one monster that you can summon successfully, and as long as you have any other Paladion except for the same copy of the self that you summon, you're going to be good to go to basically go for this card and be able to OTK. Like, it's really consistent to be able to pull that off. A lot of the other stuff can be kind of cloggy in the deck. Um, the Crusade Paladion, it's really good for that Natria Beast combo turn one like I mentioned before. Um, but you can also attribute your own uh, cards, especially like other cards. It's really good during uh, you, your opponent's end phase, as you guys saw during the replays when that guy was uh, playing the Dinosaur deck, he was able to attribute it. Really good stuff. Uh, but uh, yeah, like I said, I got a few different uh, variants of the deck. Uh, this one's just playing some hand traps. Um, this one, I believe this is the one I was playing on my live stream. Uh, there are other cheesy ways to play with the deck uh, because you can one-shot people pretty easy and you're also doing double battle damage. Psychic Blade actually combos really well with Megamorph. This is like extra, extra cheesy, right? But uh, anyways, so Psychic Blade, or if you take any damage during the duel, uh, you pay in multiples of 100 and you can go up to 2,000 bonus attack, uh, which, you know, that's 2,000 attack and you do double damage, so that's like 4,000, so that's pretty good. Yeah, you combo with Megamorph and... Um, 
The equipped monster's attack becomes double its original attack, and the original attack is going to be uh, usually 2,000. Uh, so you're going to bump it up to 4,000. So it's like another like 2,000 attack. You're, you can one-shot really easy in this deck, and that's what I, I've noticed. So I was like, oh, I'll just try out other things. I really don't recommend this. It's more for cheese than anything, but I know sometimes people like to see like really big integers. <laughs> and uh, that's kind of fun. Uh, so this is another build over here. Um, I don't think there was really anything different, uh, too different here. I think we were just playing uh, different numbers of... This, this one we dropped like the clips. The clips, like I said, it's more for cheesy uh, builds than anything. Uh, this one we see glow up bulb, and this one actually has uh, some of the brandish. There's actually a build that uh, someone mentioned uh, during my live stream. They're like, dude, you should play with brandish. Uh, I didn't test this one out, but uh, it was sent in. Unfortunately, the replay errored out, but uh, it's not a bad idea to play uh, the brandish cards in there, just because sometimes the deck. Um, you can kind of get cloggy hands if you have too many of the spells, but I guess this is supposed to kind of help out with consistency because the startup engage, you know, obviously being able to just add a card and then draw an extra card can be good. Uh, but I felt like there wasn't really anything that you could just throw in the graveyard. I mean, you could obviously add multiple copies of terraforming, but then you're looking at really inconsistent hands. So obviously, upstart that's a real simple card. I've seen people play two table and brandish, but that leads to like sometimes consistency issues. I like the idea of mixing in uh, two of these archetypes. But the, unfortunately, with the the brandish, uh, we we don't have that much stuff out for it yet. That just lets you get cards uh, in the graveyard for its own archetype that don't let you get super super advantage. Like turn one, like I don't know. I, I feel like it was an interesting concept though. Uh, but I just figured I just mouse over them. So if anyone wants to try this one out, there just wasn't enough spells. I think that the uh, the Paladins had that they can just get in the graveyard really early. Like I said, if you want to try out with tune tables, feel free to go ahead and do so. But as far as the extra deck, majority of the time it was just like three, 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 and then obviously you want like two copies of Naturia Beast because it's what runs this deck and makes it so good. But uh, you guys can let me know what you guys think about the Paladions. I think that they're a very good archetype to answer the, the question, are they good? And I think that they could definitely be competitive. I mean, a turn one Naturia Beast that is protected, keep in mind, you didn't even have to go for like that specific combo, uh, but ideally if you had um, the uh, this card over here, um, in my gameplay, I actually used um, uh, Fiendish Illusions effect to pop. Had I not done that, I would have still had one equipped. Therefore, I can. I have an Atri Beast that cannot be attacked, and they have to go ahead and get rid of my Arclo Paladion, which has minimum, guys, minimum, it's going to be 4,200 attack if you have an Atri Beast equipped to it, or linked to it. Um, so that means pretty much they're not getting rid of this, and you have, like, these two cards will protect each other kind of in a sense there and I guess this card is a searchable card and on top of that you have this card which can uh, get rid of it can pop uh, itself and get rid of an opponent's like problematic card and then you have this that negates it so it's like it's really difficult to deal with this board and like I said guys all you need for that combo and the reason why I explained that first combo is if you open a rescue cat it's like GG no re unless they have a kaiju uh, it's a very tough board to beat majority of decks will just quit out on you but um, other than that, the deck's pretty consistent to OTK, honestly, uh, is, as far as like being able to do what it needs to do. But if your opponent has, again, Psalms, that's the downside, and that's why I recommend like Twin Twisters. I would I would say you don't really need these cards, because um, how a lot of these cards work is like during your opponent's turn, if they were to do something to your, um, your card, you would just try to stop them. But at the end of the day, you can one-shot someone so easy. It's just, just not net needed, unless you're stopping Solemns. I just don't think that this card is fast enough, but uh, maybe they'll get a counterplay. I don't know if the deck will get more support. It's already pretty strong, and if it gets any more support, the deck definitely has potential. But anyways, you guys can let me know your thoughts on this archetype in the comments below. Do you guys think it's OP? Do you think it's too good? Is it not good enough? Is it going to be meta? I definitely think it has a high, high chance to be meta. If it gets any more support, definitely, definitely going to be a good deck. We don't even have like, any Link 4s. I don't know if we're going to get a Link 4. Maybe it's just 3, but uh, who knows? We'll have to wait and see. But anyways, thanks for watching, guys. And uh, if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button to see more Yu-Gi-Oh! replays. And, uh, oh, shoutouts to all you guys, Magus. Uh, I'm gonna give a shout to everyone specifically, otherwise, that wouldn't be fair. Anyways, I gotta give a shout- well, hold on. If the thing works correctly, I, I know this is not- because this is me playing. There there's no number in Brow King in here. Was it? I think it was Kappa over here, Magus, and Mura Masa. So shoutouts to you guys. Appreciate the replays. Uh, that you guys sent and if you guys want to send me any replays feel free to go ahead and do so uh, and then uh, tomorrow I got uh, some I got a bunch I actually I have a bunch of my own gameplay of the uh, new Time Lords in action So subscribe to see that very soon. But anyways, thanks for watching guys, and I am signing out